So, even when I was a little kid, I didn't understand why people aim for success by being the same, learning by rote, following the party line. I was born Shangyi in Guiyang, in South Central China, and it was a name I was forced to abandon as a young teen for my personal safety. Ironically, it was not after I became Hao on my official papers that I found new strength and the real me. As a mischievous child born into a gigantic institution dedicated to creating conformity, I was a constant irritation to my teachers, never understanding why the answer is correct. It always raises questions as to why more. My family's political history on the wrong side of the Cultural Revolution made my life, school life, more and more difficult.、Um, when I was little, I, I used to pray, "God, please give me an exciting life." Not really understanding what God means or how sometimes she or he answers in twisted fashions, my wishes were answered. I was okay with repetitions, but. Posing up to ideas I found not only disagreeable but disgusting kept me defiant. My early defiance could be excused as cute, but as I got older, I lost that privilege, and my teachers retaliated through my fellow students. Unlike here in America, a female child in China who is a rebel who insists on finding her own individuality flirts with peril. If my family had not been persecuted, if I had been simply left alone to learn, would I still be a rebel? Why do people born rebel, and why do some just simply conform? As you can imagine, I did not do road very well.、Um, I rarely finished the party indoctrination homework, and I spent a lot of my recess time running up and down the staircase for punishment. And this gave me a really solid constitution for my future bike rides in the Guizhou Mountains.、Uh, in May 24th, 2006, after one school beating too many and、um, threats of grievous harm, I feared for my life, and my parents came to my rescue. Even without any proper transfer documents, no one suspected because no one would ever dream of dropping out of school. We snuck out like thieves in the night, but in my eyes, more like double seven.、Um, all my school records were completely erased from the education system, and leaving me at age 13, no future whatsoever. Ironically. It wasn't after I go into hiding and change my name to protect my identity that I realized what my sense of self is, and then I started my self-teaching. Keeping up with normal appearances was very difficult.、Um, fear of local snoops and truancy police kept me isolated in my apartment during school hours until I was 18. To make real friends is to be truthful and to reveal yourself. I made none, fearing that words might get out and my parents might get punished. So, getting cooped up in all, all in my apartment, I turned to my study because I got I was so bored. There's nothing else to do.、Um, I decided to learn everything in English, but to do so, I had to learn English in the Mandarin only home. I knew that little babies can learn language without any textbooks or other language structure to assist them. So I reasoned with myself that if I can immerse myself in a suitable environment, I should be able to learn English just like an infant. So I had my dad wire speakers in all our rooms, and I would listen to BBC news, audio books,、um, Shakespeare plays every moment that I have a have a chance, and does not does not require a lot of concentration. Audio gave me a sense of 
familiarity with the language. The more I listened, the more distinct each word became. The first three months was complete gibberish, and then it became gibberish mingled with words I knew, even though I've, I still have no idea what the whole thing means. And um, gradually, it just, it just started to make sense. Um, I was reciting my favorite Shakespeare play, A Midsummer Night's Dream, and um, it was just one of one of the things I don't know why I did it, but I did it. It was not easy to recite a two-hour play, but my interest and increasing understanding of its artistry kept me going. Magic happened shortly after three months. Um, when I had almost finished uh, reciting the whole play, the beauty of Shakespeare language just emerged, and I fell in love. Everything just made sense, and I started to read Jane Austen, Thomas Hardy, Dickens. I became as familiar with um, Lady Chatterley's Lover as with Pippin Longstocking. Um, suddenly, I was absorbing hundreds of books with only a dictionary as a companion. And during this time, I also discovered the wonders of flow state, that suspension of boundary between in uh, boredom and overexertion when intense learning become effortless and time disappears. Um, let me think what I did next. Right, um, I became less and less depressed, for I was just full of life, lives of different culture, organisms, exotic people, different times of past, dreams of future, populated my imagination. And my anxiety about my future also started to fade under the brilliance I found in my new worlds. But my anxiety never completely disappeared, um, for I still had no idea how someone like me could be able to be accepted in Chinese society, let alone build a career on a homemade foundation. All the while, I had no idea that I'd been building myself a bridge. So my English led me to volunteer in an animation festival called AYACC. I had enjoyed meeting all these presenters from all over the world because I never had to explain to them why the hell I was not in school. I didn't feel judged. Um, during my second year of the festival, the organization suddenly decided that all volunteers in contact with presenters had to be university students. I was furious to be excluded based on credentials I could never have. So I did what any 15-year-old would do, well, I hope. I crashed their party. <laughs> uh, on the last day of the festival, um, all presenters were treated to a day-long tour through the Guizhou province. And I knew the details well. I put on my old uniform, and I snuck into the loading area. Complicating things, all presenters were paired with a volunteer at that time, and unaccompanied presenters were rare, or lost sheep were rare. So I, I didn't think much about where I can sit, I just picked the bus and I got on. I, in the corner of my eyes, I saw the woman in charge checking the bus, and I had to scramble to appear normal. And what did I do? Uh, as it happened, I found a lost sheep. Oh, that's me playing zither. Oh, that's Great Joe Province. Ah, there's my lost sheep. <laughs> he was sitting alone by himself without his translator, so I chanced the question. Why sit down? Surprised, he smiled. Yes, please. Um, I know no conference people would have the gall to drag me away from the conversation with the presenter kicking and screaming, so. I demanded an answer that, um, that would keep us busy for a tolerably long time. So I asked, um, could you tell me the derivation of the word anti-disestablishmentarianism and how it might apply to China? <laughs> think, 
that long words, you know, means long answers, which is, I don't think that's quite true. I felt really comfortable talking with him. It's as if I've known him for a long time. I confessed about who I am and about my situation, and he was really surprised to find out that I was only just shy of 16 and I'd been out of school for so long. We kept up with a lively、um, correspondence, and David strongly encouraged that I continue my education, not just by myself, but in a more healthy and productive environment. He suggested I study here in the States, which was rather a fantastical and impossible idea because my parents never went to college and they couldn't afford my education in China, let alone here in the States. But this guy, this David guy, he、um, he made me a promise that changed my life. I have no idea what hit him in the head, but he said. I will do everything in my power to get you here in the states to study. His promise took us three and a half years to fulfill. Without meeting chance, luck, or maybe something mysterious, I, I feel like my inventiveness, my hard work, and my, my initiative. Create, created a hole in the universe, universe and gave me a chance, or maybe it was just my childhood prayer. Who knows? But this David guy is no longer David. Now he's my dad,、uh, and uh, that's my mom on the right. This was a picture taken in Puerto Rico about two winters ago.、Uh, so on Dad's three more visits to China, he brought me books, and on one more, he brought my younger brother Alexander. When Dad and I were traveling in Hong Kong, we ran into this professor.、Uh, his name is Lonnie, Lonnie Hodge, and he introduced us to a college called St. John's College and their Great Books program. I was really excited to be notified that there's such a school that does not use a curriculum but just books, because I feel like I've created my own Great Books program alone in my room. So I send in my video recital of my Shakespeare, a Midsummer Night's Dream, and my Zither recital, and along with the application, the school accepted me on a full scholarship. I was amazed that they recognized what I've been doing alone in my room. Yet another catch: a unmarried female in China with. No school records and no assets. The American consulate turned me down twice for a visa. But because people all around the world believed in me and advocated on my behalf, my third visa was a was a charm.、Um, as I stand before you, thinking about such a long road traveled in such a short time and. I couldn't help wonder at it all. I'm graduating this May from St. John's College, and I can't wait to start my next exciting journey. Thank you. <laughs>